infinite worlds, each an altered version of the others. From the beginning of time, they have existed apart. This is the day they collide. Right, so one of the big announcements here at GDC this year is a new game from Turbine. It's been a while since you announced a new game, so that's yep. got to be exciting, right? Yeah, we've been working on this in secret for, for some time now, for a couple of years, and so uh, it's been great to come out and finally get to talk about it, and I think people are genuinely surprised, which is awesome. So I'm, I'm really impressed by this whole standy thing that we got behind us here, and it's sort of significant for what the whole game is all about, multiverse. It's that word that, that us nerds, us, we, we just love that word, right? It's just infinite possibilities yeah. and it's something that fits real well with this kind of game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for a MOBA game, you want as many different types of distinct characters as you can possibly have. And so when we were talking about how we're going to do this game, just talking about DC and talking about the Elseworlds and the multiverse, it was like, oh, this is great. You know, not only can I be Batman, but I can be, you know, a steampunk Batman or I can be, you know, Wonder Woman or I can be, you know, Wonder Woman from an atomic age or from, you know, a uh, sort of arcane age, you know, like Elizabethan times, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's great. I mean, it just gives us an endless, endless amount of possibilities. And also the characters are less filler. It's more like those iconic characters that people really want to play, but different versions of them, rather than having 100 different characters, you're going to have four Batmans or yeah. whatever the number is. I yeah, don't know. Is it four? Yeah. So never, Well, it depends. Some of them will have, you know, one or two variants. Some of them might have more. It really depends on if it lends itself. Because, you know, it's not only just what's cool for the character, but what's going to be a great power set in the game, you know, so we have to balance the game, make sure that makes sense. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, these are all iconic characters and it also means I can play Batman. You know, maybe I love Batman, but I want a different play style, right? So I can still play Batman, but I can have a different play style because I'm playing Vampire Batman, who's a little bit different, or I'm playing, you know, uh, Gaslight Batman. So I'm still playing Batman, but my play style is not rooted to only what Batman would do, right? So have you have you given thought to that so that you have Batman, but he's a different kind of role in, in the game? Yeah. Now, they still need to feel like there's something in them that feels like Batman, right? So Batman's never going to shoot a gun. But, for example, Gaslight Batman has a sonic cannon, you know, so he can shoot this sonic energy across the map, which is very different, uh, Gaslight Batman, which is very different from Nightmare Batman, whose ult is basically jumping on you and biting your neck, right? So, <laughs> so you have all different kinds of play styles, even though you're playing the character you want to play. So we're all familiar with the MOBAs and, and sort of the basics, the League of Legends, you know, your Dota's. Uh, what kind of twist are you putting on it, you know, apart from it being sort of DC Universe? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the biggest thing is this whole concept of destructive PvP. So you're still playing a MOBA, as you would expect. You still have lanes that you're pushing down. You're still trying to meet the basic strategic objectives with your team that you've practiced. But now you have an environment where I, I'm a superhero or supervillain, right? I need to feel powerful. So it kind of started from that. So now I can destroy things. You know, if I see a car on the sidewalk, I can pick it up and throw it at you, right? Or I can yank down a telephone pole and beat you over the head with it. This is a really cool experience, you know, in this kind of environment. It's interactive. And so not only do I feel powerful, but I feel like I can have some kind of impact in the environment. Now, without fundamentally changing the way the gameplay works, but it means that the environment is now a weapon that I can use. And then the second thing is we have catastrophic events. So in fact, in the stuff that people are playing today, a meteor comes crashing down, hits the map in the middle of the match, and kind of makes some subtle changes to the map. It might change the way the lanes work, not fundamentally, but just give some new opportunities for one team or the other team to take advantage of. Kind of like, uh, it's like you're playing a football game, you know, and quarterback basically sees the teams adjusting on the other side. So quickly you call an audible and everybody rearranges, to, you know, to make the play. And it's something you've practiced over and over and over again. It's going to be the same thing with these catastrophic events. And so they also create new opportunities. Like meteor crashes into the map. Now a bridge is weakened. So now I can use that to knock on top of the other, you know, the other team if I know how to do it. So it, it's all the things you love about a MOBA with some more depth and a little bit more choices, but without fundamentally changing sort of the strategic goals of playing that game. We're talking about, you know, m massive amounts of characters, maybe a hundred or so or more, but we're also talking about perks or little things that you can augment that character yep. with, things that 
you know, if, if there's a particular skill or something that you want your character to have that may not necessarily be part of, of what that character is, then yeah. in the DC universe you can add that, right? Yeah, so we have, uh, we have sort of extra skills called stolen powers. So one of them, for example, is super strength. So if I'm Superman, I expect to have super strength. That's going to be part and parcel of being Superman. So I can pick up a car and throw it. If I'm Joker, super strength is probably not going to be the first thing you think of. But if I'm playing the Joker, I still want the ability to do that sometimes. If I see you throw a car, I want to throw a car. So if I have Superman in my roster and I master him, like I get really good at him and reach the highest level, then I can unlock that stolen power and use it with some of my other characters, kind of loan it to my other characters. So from time to time, I can use powers that might not necessarily normally be part of what that character could do. So again, it gives you just kind of more variety, changes things up a little bit, you know, and uh, and just makes it more fun. I guess, I guess it's also kind of a, a nice surprise to have in your back pocket when you're when the other team may expecting you to have a certain set of skills and yeah. be a certain kind of char character. These stolen powers can actually sort of merge different classes a little bit or sort of bridge yeah. the gap there. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it doesn't fundamentally change it, but it, yeah, it gives you a different angle, a little different flavor, and also um, it's just more strategy to learn, right? It, you know, each stolen power in some cases is going to be tailored to a different character. So, you know, Superman's use of super strength is not the same as Wonder Woman's use of super strength. There's going to be something a little more inherent to that character, right? So we never lose sight of this is Wonder Woman, this is Batman, this is Superman. You know, you really want to always feel like it's those characters, even though we've twisted them a little bit. So we've, we've talked a little bit about the characters, mm -hmm. but, but obviously there's a lot of iconic locations as well and, and some stuff that you may pull from when you create the maps. What, what kind of philosophy are you going into with when it comes to maps? Do you want to have a lot of maps or just a few good or just one good that some games have? So basically, so on the gameplay level, uh, we're basically working on three maps right now. So the one that people are playing today is a sort of a circular map, you know, point capture, a little bit more like Dominion and other MOBAs. But um, we thought that was a good place to start because it's sort of easy to get into perfect for the sort of start of a beta. We're already working on two other maps that we're playing all the time. One of them is a sort of more recognizable tri-lane map, which we know is absolutely critical, um, but we're working in the destruction into that map, so it's going to take us a little bit of, you know, working the kinks out, but that's something that we want to get out to players sometime this year. And we're also working on a custom map that we're not talking about yet, but we're really excited about, which is, you know, going to be new, new to players, incorporate some new things they haven't seen before, but still feel like a MOBA, but we think it's going to be really exciting. But uh, uh, more on that later. And then in terms of the look and feel of them, you know, obviously we have all these characters to draw from because we have all these different universes to draw from. So we'll be, you know, making that appear in some of these maps as well. So you're in Gotham, you know, Gotham Heights, which is sort of modern Gotham right now. But as we move into other maps, we have opportunities to go into Metropolis. We have opportunities to go into you know, Gaslight Gotham or some of these other things you'll start seeing in the game over time. So the, the story and the sort of the setting of it is this cataclysmic event. Sort of, will that affect a, in any way in the gameplay? Will there be a shift between different multiverses and and um, well, g will there be anything like that? So obviously the biggest thing is it creates the opportunity for these worlds, for these characters. That's the number one thing about what the story does for us. But there is kind of a meta story that's going to have some seasonal components to it. Again, we're not talking about a lot yet, but that'll unfold over time. Uh, the thing players are going to think is really cool, and then in the maps eventually you'll start to see evidence of the fact that these multiple universes have crashed together and they seem to be you know having weird interaction with each other but uh, again you know we gotta save some surprises for the future so you gotta look at that not just focus on what you're doing all right that's, that's that's kind of a challenge yeah yeah well you know we like to keep busy so <laughs> so you got a lot of experience in the online space uh, and obviously this is going to be a free-to-play title, as, as are some of your other games from previous years. Uh, what kind of a business model are you adapting? Are you, are you sort of, do you, do you want to break the mold of current MOBAs or, or are you sort of, you know, doing what, what people are familiar with in terms of uh, microtransactions. We're not talking a lot about the business model yet. We're pretty sure what we want to do. We'll be talking about it a little bit later in the year. But, you know, we definitely want this to be a familiar experience to players, right? We don't want to reinvent the wheel too much. You know, and even even with the games like uh, Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and & Dragons, that, as you said, we've brought free to play. It's really more about flexibility than about, you know, yes, it's free to play, but it also means that if you want to participate deeply with the game and, you know, have more of the game, you can do it the way you want to, right? Rather then I have to pay you for everything and I get everything whether I use it or not, right? So there's something in that that we think is still really interesting. But we'll be talking more about it in the future. 
So you just announced the game. What, what's what's the roadmap ahead? I'm I'm sure there's going to be opportunities to sort of jump in and get some mm -hmm. some hands on this even before it releases mm -hmm. because you gotta you gotta balance it yep. the game, right? Yep. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. So um, so what we announced yesterday is that people can go to uh, www.infinitecrisis.com and sign up for the beta. And what that basically means is that you'll be eligible to be invited to the start of our closed beta, which is very soon. We're not announcing one yet, but it's it's not far away. And then gradually people more and more people will be invited and start playing more and more and as you say we're going to learn about how we can make the game better and then it's just going to grow from there you know we're going to be continually releasing new characters bringing more people in and then eventually opening it up you know to everyone into the beta and then hoped hopefully through you know late falls be ready to to get out in front of the public more right looking forward to it thank you very much for your time oh thank you i appreciate it